hey guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in this video we're going to be finishing up the dress that we started last week and if you haven't already seen the video go ahead and click the link in the description bar as well as the link in the i cards above we're going to finish up the dress that we started and it was my sister's birthday dress so without further ado let's get into it So at this point, I've gone ahead to fix the keyhole and if you would like to see how I did that, go and watch the previous video. The next thing to do would be to fix the neckline and if you don't know how to do it, please go ahead and keep watching. So you want to locate the right side of the main fabric as well as the right side of the lining and then you want to go ahead and place it like I've just done so that the right side of the lining is facing the right side of the main fabric. Afterwards, you want to go ahead and pin all around the neckline. So it's a bit of an awkward position. So you want to go ahead and you want to do this gently. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you again how I'm doing it. And I've gone ahead to pin one side and I'm just going to make sure to unravel it so that it's not a mess and just, you know, make sure that I bring out the entire neckline. So like I said, it is a bit of an awkward shape, but you can go ahead and do that. You want to make sure the right side of the lining as well as the right side of the main fabrics are facing each other and then you want to go ahead and pin it in place as you can see it gets bulky at the other side but that's how it should be After pinning the entire neckline, that is you have pinned the uh, main fabric as well as the lining fabric together, go ahead and mark the sewing allowance of half an inch and then go ahead and sew it together on half an inch sewing allowance. After sewing the neckline together, here's what it looks like. And as you can see, I went ahead to notch it. So basically what notching it does is that it allows space for the tension and the ease, and then the neck can just form properly. So the next thing to do will be to top stitch. However, this might not be so convenient for everyone to do. I went ahead to top stitch and as you can see, I didn't even finish top stitching. So it is a bit hard. If you're unable to do it, go ahead and skip that, but please make sure to iron it properly. So now we'll be moving on to the back piece. For the back piece, you want to go ahead and mark your dart position. And you guys already know how I do that. I do that by snipping the dart legs and then I go ahead and put a pin where the dart starts and I mark it with my chalk on all the four pieces, which is the lining piece, two of that, as well as the main fabric, two of that. After marking that, I will go ahead and sew my dart in place after sewing the dart here's what it looks like and in this case as you can see i sewed it exactly to the point where i had my needle however for the bust point remember that we didn't sew exactly to the bust point so right now the next thing to do will be to sort out the neckline for the back pieces and as you can tell we have two back pieces go ahead and place the lining pieces on the main pieces so that the right sides are facing each other After placing the lining piece on the main fabric so that the right sides are facing each other, go ahead and pin along the neckline. Afterwards, you want to go ahead and mark the sewing allowance of half an inch all through the neckline and then you want to go ahead and sew the neckline in place by sewing on half an inch. After sewing, remember to notch and top stitch the neckline as shown and that will be all for the neckline. After ironing the back necklines flat, it's now time to join the shoulders. So to join the shoulders, what I do is I open up the shoulders so that I have the lining separate from the main fabric and then I match it. So I'm going ahead to match the front shoulder to the back shoulder, making sure the right sides are facing each other and I pair the main fabric together as well as the lining together and I pin it all the way as shown. After pinning the shoulders together all the way, I mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch and then I go ahead and sew. You remember to re repeat this for the other side as well.
after joining the shoulders here's what it looks like so the next thing to do i like to just you know make them flat and just pin it in position and then give it a good iron make sure the seams are open and then i have that like that so the next thing to do will be to join the sides and you guys already know the drill To join the sides, go ahead and place the main fabric on the table, ensure it's flat and ensure the lining is kept away. Then you want to go ahead and place the sides on each other so as in this case, the back is placed on the front and the sides are placed on each other. Pin the sides together and then go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of one and a half inches which is what I left in my case. So of course if you left one inch in your case you'll be marking that out. Repeat this for the other side so again you want to place the right sides on each other and then you want to go ahead and pin the sides together and then you want to go ahead and sew. After joining the sides for the main fabric, go ahead and join the sides for the lining and you want to do that by repeating the exact same thing. So of course right sides facing right sides and you go ahead and pin it and sew it on one and a half inches allowance and afterwards you are literally almost done with the bodice. So the next thing to do will be to join the bodice to the skirt and we're going to do that in a second. To join the bodice to the skirt, what I like to do is I like to find the center of the bodice piece by folding it into two and creating a small notch around the center as well as the center of the skirt piece by folding it into two around the waist and creating a small notch around the center. Afterwards, I like to pin the center of both fabrics together while the right sides are facing each other and then I like to pin my way all the way from the center towards the edge which is where the zip allowance would be. So I'll be pinning it from the center to the left as well as from the center to the right. Afterwards, I make sure that all my darts are aligned so the dart on the skirt as well as the dart on the bodice are in alignment as well as the center pieces or the side seams rather. I ensure the side seam align as well. So you want to make sure the side seam on the skirt as well as the side seam on the bodice also align and this is important because we've done all of this correction on the pattern so because it was done on the pattern it should actually align after cutting out your pieces and sewing it together if it doesn't align then you must have done something wrong After pinning the entire bodice to the skirt piece, go ahead and mark the sewing allowance of half an inch and then go ahead and sew it in place on half an inch sewing allowance. You also want to repeat this on the lining piece doing the exact same thing ensuring the right sides are facing each other. Afterwards, this is what the dress looks like and at this point you are nearly done with the dress. The next thing we'll do, you know, to do will be to do the zipper and then the sleeves. And as you can see, all my darts are meeting the darts on the bodice as well as the darts on the skirt are meeting each other. So now moving on to the zipper, if you don't know how to fix a zipper, do check out the video I have on how to install a zipper. I put a link in the icons above as well as in the description bar, so please check it out. So for the zipper, what I like to do is I like to mark my zipper allowance first and the zipper allowance I left is one and a half inches. So I go ahead and mark one and a half inches all the way on both sides of the fabric. After marking the zipper allowance of one and a half inches, I go ahead and start with the left side of the fabric and then I go ahead and unzip the zipper and place the left side of the zipper on the left side of the fabric, ensuring the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the fabric. So please don't let this confuse you. Like I said, I have a video on how to install a zipper. Watch the video if that would help you and i'm sure that would definitely help you so yeah go ahead and install the zipper as it should be and ensure that you know the zipper is done properly after installing the zipper as shown here's what it looks like and at this point i've not covered up my zipper with my lining but i'm just showing you what it looks like so to cover up the zipper with the lining you want to separate the lining pieces like i've just done and then you just want to do as shown 
You basically just want to cover the zipper by placing the lining piece over the zipper so that the right sides of the lining and the right side of the fabric are facing each other. Go ahead and pin that in place and then you want to go ahead and sew as close to the zipper as possible. Ensure to cover the zipper allowance with the lining on both sides and after covering it with the lining on both sides, here is what it should look like. So at this point, I've done one side and I'm going ahead to do the other side, which is pretty much easy. Like I said, you fold it over as shown and then you just cover it and sew it in place. So after covering on both sides, here's what it looks like. Go ahead and flip the dress over to the right side. And as you can see, the dress is now neatly finished and this is what it looks like. So I'm pushing out all the corners and then I'm going to go ahead and zip up the dress give the dress a good iron at this point and the next thing to do or the last thing to do will be to fix the sleeves Here's what the ruching effect looks like when it's not on my sister without my error showing. And if you want to know the error or the mistake that I made, please go ahead and watch the first part of this video. But here's what it looks like when we're doing the fitting. And with the fitting, I was pretty happy with the keyhole. You know, it all sat nicely. The only thing like I had a problem with was the ruching. And I already explained to you guys my error and how to correct that. So we're going to go on and move on to the sleeves, which is the last part of this dress. And then we can finish up the dress. To fix the sleeves, I like to arrange my armhole area. So at this point, what you can see me doing is I'm opening up the seam around um, the armhole and the main fabric, the side seam area, as well as the shoulder seam. And I'm just pinning it in place and I'm laying it flat. Afterwards, you guys know the drill, you go ahead and measure the armhole. So at this point, if you don't know how to install or how I fix my sleeves, Go ahead and watch the video that I've linked in iCards above as well as in the description bar. It's a video on how to install or how to cut and sew sleeves. It will help you so please go ahead and watch it. So go ahead and get the remainder of the fabric and then you want to fold your fabric into four which is what I'm doing. After folding the fabric as shown, you want to mark out the ammo measurement that you took horizontally. And then you want to go ahead and mark the 5 inches vertical drop starting at the edge. So if you don't understand all what I'm saying, please go ahead and watch the tutorial on how to cut your sleeve. After doing that, you want to draw the S-shaped armhole curve. And then you want to go ahead and cut out the sleeves. Now the difference between this sleeves and you know your straight sleeve is that for this sleeve, because it's very wide, the first thing you want to do is you want to measure out the sleeve length and it's important to make it longer than your actual sleeve length. I would say about three or four inches longer than your actual sleeve length. And then you want to also make it wider at the bottom. So what you can see me doing is I'm taking a ruler and drawing a slant line from where the ammo stops and making it go out, just make it extend. So you can make the slant line go out so that it's wider by two or three inches than the ammo measurements that you took. I hope that makes sense. After marking out the sleeve shape that you want, remember in this case it's wider around the hem or around the sleeves and that's because of the style. Go ahead and cut it out. After cutting out my sleeves, I go ahead and notch the sleeve crown and this is important so that when I'm trying to install the sleeves, I can know where my sleeve crown should be. The next thing I do is I mark the wrong side of the sleeves and then I go ahead and separate them. 
After separating the sleeves, I go ahead and fold them so that the right sides are facing each other and then I go ahead and pin along the side seams. After pinning along the side seams, I go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of 1 inch and I repeat this for the other sleeve as well. After marking out the sewing allowance of 1 inch, I go ahead and sew it in place. After sewing the side seam in place, here's what it looks like. The next thing to do will be to make the elastic casing because as you can tell, I put some elastic at the hem of the sleeve. So go ahead and fold it by folding it half an inch and then almost one inch, which will be about three quarter of an inch if I can put a measurement to it. So go ahead and fold, in the, um, fold it or make the elastic casing rather by folding in half an inch and then three quarter of an inch and then holding this in place with pins. After doing this all around, go ahead and sew it in place remember not to sew it all the way to the end so that you can have like a gap or a space for you to pass the elastic into the elastic casing after sewing the elastic casing into place you can see that i left a gap on sewn and this gap is necessary so that we can fit the elastic into the elastic casing with the aid of a safety pin, we're going to go ahead and fit the elastic into the elastic casing. To know how much elastic you need, you need to measure the wrist of your client. I'm using my wrist because my sister and I are quite similar in size. So I've gone ahead to use my wrist as a measurement so I can know how much elastic that I require. And I've gone ahead to cut out the elastic that I require. Remember that you need to cut out two pieces for each sleeve. After doing that, attach the elastic onto the elastic casing or attach the elastic rather onto the safety pin and then go ahead and feed it into the elastic casing as shown. Remember to hold one side so that the elastic does not totally disappear and continue feeding the elastic into the elastic casing until it comes out on the other side as shown. After feeding the elastic through the elastic casing and it's come out on the other side, go ahead and unpin the safety pin and then stitch the elastic close together as shown. After stitching the elastic close together, you want to stitch the gap close and then you want to repeat this for the second sleeve as well. So as you can see on this one, I've gone ahead to fix one sleeve onto the, on, onto the dress. And like I said, if you don't know how to fix the sleeves, check out the video that I linked earlier or check the description bar for the video. So go ahead and fix the other sleeve as well. And at this point, we are now done with the dress. Here's what it looks like with the balloon sleeves or the bulky sleeves. And as you can see, the sleeves are wider at the hem or around the bottom area and guys at this point we are now done all right guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was worth your while if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to share don't forget to leave your comments suggestions and feedback in the comment section below thank you guys so much for being a part of this family i appreciate you guys and i love you thank you and i'll see you in my next video next sunday bye